Welcome back to Change Your Perspective, Change Your Awareness, Change Your Life. I'm Dr. McLean, I'm a leadership consultant specializing in mindset, identity, self-awareness, and communication. And I want to talk about, um, I've been talking about like what is main character energy and how do we get into main character energy? And that is by coming out of being self as character and coming into the self as author, right? So when you are in authorship of your life, you need to really make sure that you're analyzing what's going on. Most people don't think about maybe writing a book, but the author knows pretty much everything that's going on. They have an outline for it. Some people just fly by the seat of their pants and write, but they still have to go back and analyze how things work, right? So in you coming into main character energy, there needs to be a level of analysis that takes place. Most people are not able to do that on their own. It's why we hire therapists. It's why we hire coaches. It's why we hire consultants. It's why we hire mentors, because it is very hard. I say this a lot, and this is not mine. Someone gave me this. The pickle in the jar cannot read its own label, right? So we are not that good at self-analysis. Now we can get better at it. Most often when we're starting that process, we're just overthinking and we're not productive in our thoughts. So all that to say, I'm hopeful that the last couple of videos have given you a formulaic method to analyze by yourself, okay? Today I wanna to talk about what you need to be the main character in your life, living from a place of internal motivation, okay? And in order to do that, the number one thing you need is to come up with a set of morals and values that you do not deviate from. What we do as people is we allow external circumstances, parents, school, job, society to dictate to us what is important. Once we figure out what is and is not important to us, we can live by that standard, right? Now, there are some things like, like let's take money, right? Money is an external thing that's important. Success. Those are not actually the real values. Those are tools that help to validate. You see that? So if you're so focused on money and you're so focused on success and you're so focused on the things that are supposed to be what we're achieving here. It's not what you actually want. I mean, yes, everybody wants money. What we actually value is freedom, okay? That's freedom. Money is a tool to freedom. So it's also the a process coming into main, er, main character energy is also the process of being able to disseminate the facade from the truth. The fake thing is the money, okay? Because if we came up with something tomorrow that wasn't money, it was something else, we would value that because we don't actually value money or any other system that gets made up. We value freedom. I would say almost every human ever fundamentally values freedom, whether they realize it or not. Now, what freedom looks like to certain people, different story, All right? So a lot of these things need to be defined in our own parameters. Like what does freedom look like to you will be very different than what freedom looks like to me. We don't think about freedom if we've never realized we're in captivity, okay? Now, as somebody who has now lived life in captivity, I think about freedom a lot because I've had my, my freedom taken away. I've had my freedom taken from me. I didn't think about it before because it was just a natural right. Part of that is being born and raised in the United States. Other people who are not from the United States do think about that a lot differently, right? No, I don't think, or I don't particularly care what your values are, okay? I just know that most people value freedom, whether they realize it or not. Right? You don't want to be in relationships that make you feel like you're trapped. Nobody likes to feel trapped. We don't like to feel trapped. Why? Because we inherently value freedom. So that one's kind of true to humanity, 
right? But a lot of people aren't aware of. And I'm just taking what you might think you value. Another one, you might think you value. Um, hmm, what's the right way to say this? I'll say sex, okay? Now for men, when they want sex, it's that like feel good feeling. And for women, when we're thinking about sex, most often it's like attention, right? Women love attention, we do. Men enjoy things that feel good. Men are, I mean, we all love things that feel good, but men I find are very hedonistic in ways I don't understand. Whereas women, we are very attention seeking, you know? Either way, it's not, in either, in either case for men or women, pleasure or attention. It is not actually that you value sex. What you value is intimacy. What you value is closeness and connection. This is another fundamental human principle or value, right? We all fundamentally want connection, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. We are hardwired for connection. We just are, we are interdependent, right? I am giving you humankind values. Connection is one, freedom is another. To be seen, heard, understood, those are all human values, okay? Every human at a spiritual level values that, okay? And spiritual values are actually different than self values, okay? Which I know might blow some minds here, but let's just wait on it, okay? Spiritual values are like universal. Self values are things that you value for yourself in the way that you want to conduct your business. For me, those look like respect. I've always been like that. That was a thing on day one in my classroom. I was like, guys, I don't care if you respect me. I respect you because you are here, but you will respect each other or you do not have a place in my classroom. It is that simple. Life is too hard. High school is too hard. English is too hard for some people. If you don't respect each other, you don't stay here. We had very few disrespectful, if any, incidences in my class because that was a value I put in that classroom that I lived out from day one every year, right? Two. Um, and again, this is a, a new one I've just implemented. I talked a little bit about the other day, but honesty. Honesty. Now, I wasn't always honest. I was deceptive, honestly, and manipulative. I was in my previous self-life, pre-2018. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Now, there is an art to how you disseminate information. Okay, information is currency. You don't want to just word vomit everything all the time. However, I'm always honest. So now people know I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. That's a really important well, for me. This is a McLean value, right? This doesn't need to necessarily be a personal value. Doesn't matter to me what you pick. There's a lot of values and characteristics. Pick one. I will um, put in the link. Put in the description. I'll put a link for a values quiz that I use in my own coaching practice, where you can kind of go through and see which ones are your top. It's a really cool little little thing. Um, it's free. It's a free tool free diagnostic value tool. And you can see if you agree with it or if you like something different, you are the author of your reality and of yourself. So anything you do or don't like, guess what? You get to fix and change. But you have to learn what you don't like about yourself and don't say everything, right? This is the other thing. This is why it's very hard for self-analysis because we are inherently negative to ourselves. We cannot see the good in ourselves for whatever reason. And I was like this too. Now I've got a more fair and balanced processing system that makes me more just to myself and to everybody else, I think. I like to think anyhow. So for me, personal Michalina values, respect and honesty. Um, I've always valued discipline, mental discipline, intellectual discipline, now even physical discipline. I didn't before, trust me on that, now I do. Um, so that's one, the biggest, the biggest one in my own personal journey 
was peace. I started prioritizing my peace and protecting my peace. It was a game changer in my own personal walk, in my relationships. Like I was like, you're not stealing my peace. The minute I lose my peace is the minute I lose my power. Okay. So you ain't, it's just not going to happen. I don't care enough about what you're saying or what you're thinking for it to affect me. I just don't. Not going to let it steal my peace. Like, okay, you do you. I had somebody comment on um, a TikTok video of TikTok that I did the other day. And she was like, didn't you chase the lusty 17 year old because you were a lusty 30 year old? And I was like, I don't even care. But let me educate you. It's like, first off, I've never chased anybody in my life. Because I don't do it. I don't chase, I attract, I never have, I never needed to. And second off, like you're entitled to believe whatever you want. So you do you. That's really where I'm at. Like I really, you're not stealing my peace with your like weird negative energy. I'm not here for it. And so peace was a big one that I really worked to protect. Now, I don't care which ones you pick, right? There's a million out there. Trust, truth, honor, loyalty, discipline, peace, love. Like, you can pick whatever you want. If you don't know what you value, awareness is the first step. You can't take any action on anything to change your life, to be the main character in your story, if you don't know the fundamental axioms of yourself. And every good author does this, where they're like, okay, I know this character. This is what they stand for. This is what they're looking for. This is how they show up. Like I have a blueprint of this character and I know not only their backstory and their front story where they're going, but also what makes them tick. The problem with ourselves, why we are not in our main character energy is because we don't know ourselves. We do not know ourselves. And more than that, we don't wanna learn ourselves. We don't wanna take the time to learn about ourselves. And it's such a disservice. Why in the hell would anybody else want to learn about you if you don't want to learn about you? They wouldn't. If you are saying, I'm not worth knowing to myself, what you're actually saying is, I'm not worth knowing to anybody. It's low self-worth and low self-esteem. And so figure out what your values are. If you can't do it, self-analysis, if you can't do it, hire somebody, honestly. You don't have to, it's a faster process. But up to you, just figure it out. And two, determine if those are things you like to value, you know? If you don't like to value the things that you're valuing, if you value work over your family and you're like, this isn't productive, Change it. Change it from perspective of you as author, right? You as author, that second step, not you as character. And so morals and values. If you really want to, um, what's his name? Bill George has a couple books that talks about like true north. Anybody who is actually pushing out good doctrine on internal motivation and internal guidance systems, you will ground in value system. You have got to have values that you do not deviate from. Jordan Peterson, same thing, right? If you do not know your values, you're gonna show up just like a leaf in the wind, non-player character, side character energy. If you are using values that your family valued and you're like, shoot, I don't actually even believe in this. Side character energy. You're letting someone else be the author in your life. And so figure out, uh, I was gonna say figure out what you believe in, right? I don't want you to take that as like a spiritual premise. Now, of course, if you are aligned with some kind of faith, some kind of religious belief system. Make sure you actually believe, like I say this coming from Joyce Meyer, it's not mine, but like you 
can be a Christian and like not exercise the values of Christianity. You know, people can sit in a church pew all day. It doesn't necessarily make them a Christian, just like you sitting in a garage doesn't make you a car, right? That's Joyce Meyer, it's not me. And I love that because it, if you're not practicing what you're preaching, then you're good for nothing. So you can, if you are somebody who resonates with some kind of faith-based practice, some kind of spiritual practice, some kind of religious practice. And yes, I define them as three different things. Okay, I do not define them as the same. A faith-based practice and a spiritual practice and a religious practice are three different things to this mind. And I'll explain that later if you want to know more about it. But if you have one of those things, make sure those values, A, are aligned with you, and B, you're act actually practicing, right? And it doesn't necessarily, you can also have like um, mantras that are values-based. Like I have one that is um, leave it better than you found it. Leave it better than you found it. I adopted that in the last five years because it speaks to the values of like kindness, compassion, um, things of that nature. There's the golden rule. Don't treat anybody else the way you wouldn't want to be treated, right? That's a mantra that goes back to respect, respecting yourself and respecting others, right? Non-judgment. These are all important value systems. So if you want, and this is only if you want to get in control of your life, if you want to live a life full of purpose and meaning that you are excited about and happy about, if you want to live a life that's miserable, that you have no control in, do you. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. You're probably not watching this. But this is just if you want to change your life. Like This is just if you want to get in control of yourself so that you're an unshakable force. Like You're unshakable. Nobody's going to tell me about me. <laughs> Sorry. like You don't know me as well as I know me. And you're blessed if you get to know me. You know, it's like self-worth very high. Now, and I took the most shameful thing of pretty, any, pretty much any experience ever and used it to springboard to be this version of myself. So if I can do that, anybody can do this. Okay, I'm not special. I'll teach you how, but you can do it guarantee you you haven't been through anything as publicly shameful as I have almost guarantee it and I honestly I'm sorry if you have it's not the best guarantee you have not done anything that's too big or too bad to show up differently like you just haven't okay I'll tell you right now so everything in life is perspective this is why we're here change your perspective change your awareness change your life everything in life is perspective which you can change at any time when you get a different perspective, it's very easy. Once you see a thing in a new light, you can't unsee it, you know? So all this to say, figure out your value system. Figure out your values system. What you used to value, or rather what you currently value, whether you like it or not, what you wanna start valuing. This is a ever evolving lifelong process, so you're not gonna get it all in one go. No point in trying. Do the best you can with what you got. If you're ready for more advanced work or you want to 10X the process, drop me a comment. I will put the values uh, quiz, little quizzy thing link below so you have that. But other than that, yeah, it is a excavation process to figure out what you value and if it's serving you or not. It really is. So if you want to be the main character in your story, there is a smattering of self-analysis that needs to be done, right? A slew of self-awareness, self-analysis, very necessary. Um, hopefully this series is helping you get there. That is the point of this series. That's the point of all the work I do, right? Change your perspective, change your awareness, change your life. Um, if you like what we're doing here, like, subscribe, drop a comment, tell your friends, grow the channel. Um, and I will see you guys on the next main character energy video.